How are you guys all? So, I see lots of people here, lots of people who look a little different, all kinds of stuff. So, so what's new? Anything new? Anything? Anybody have anything to say? Well, first of all, I don't know if you all know, but I our Mary that. back there, oh, wow. our Mary wrote, she's been blogging with, oh, no. for quite a while. And this basically journals mm -hmm. her first year after bariatric surgery. The highs, the lows, you know, the good, the bad, whatever you want to look at, Mary's got it in here. And, and I'm going to put a plug. I bought it off of Amazon if you guys want it. Yeah. Okay, now look, there's more. So it's called, now it's Mary's turn, year one. And I've, I've been doing some reading in there and there's something that I don't know if anybody's done, but I've done it and when I, I read it, it, it made me think, I just wanna see if anybody else has done it. Because we can't eat everything that we cook, right? So, so <laughs> what do we do? We cook it for everybody else, uh -huh. Uh -huh. right? Everybody else. Mary, Mary talks about in here, she went to lunch with a friend, okay? And she suggested she get a coffee shake. But she had surgery too, but Mary's trying to feed her, okay? Um, then um, giving the family things, taking them out. Well, don't you guys want a milkshake or something like that? And taking them to things that she wouldn't normally take them to because she doesn't eat it and she wasn't gonna eat it. So when I read that, it brought me back to when I first had my surgery, I tried to feed the world. No, I did, I tried to yeah. feed the world. I mean, I, I remember, I had my surgery two weeks before Thanksgiving. And it's like, I was cooking stuff I'd never cooked before. I'd never cooked acorn squash, but it sounded good. So my dad, my mom, and my brothers all had to eat it because I was gonna cook it. I mean, I was cooking stuff that I'm like, I'd never cooked before. I made chocolate chip cookies and brought them to the people that I worked with. What was that about? I, I didn't taste the dough like I normally like to or take big tablespoons of the dough with those, because I always put extra chocolate chips in them. I just shovel, I would normally shovel in and you know, one cookie for the pan, one cookie for Liz. Not one of them entered my lips, but everybody else had to eat them. Come on, don't you want them? Don't you? I brought them. I'm like, Liz, we, we, we're, we're okay. No, it's okay. I brought, I went out and I couldn't go to work, but I could drive. I went out and bought everybody lunch. Stuff that I couldn't eat, but probably that I wanted. Anybody else do that? It makes you go, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. You know, and, and not all of it's, you know, not all of it's easy stuff, you know, completely to deal with, you right. know. Um, and, you know, um, what is it? Good stuff, bad stuff, off track. How many people have fallen off, off, the, off the little wagon every once in a while? We've all done it. We've all done it, you know. Um, but the, the thing is, is that she talks in here about she was exercising four to five days a week. 45 minutes a day. She got busy. Life, you know what happens? Life gets what? In the way. In the way. Mm -hmm. She, her daughter was, had basically pretty much nominated her to be a stage mom at a production she was doing that last several months. And Mary found her four to five days, went to maybe three to four days, down to two days, down to no days, you know. And the, the one thing that you have to take from that is that you have to find the time for you. You always have to find the time for you. And sometimes it's hard to find the time for you. I don't know about you, I used to feel guilty finding the time for me. I used to feel very guilty because it's like, wow. I mean, I, when I had my surgery, I still had kids living at home. And I was like, oh, I felt so terribly, terribly guilty taking time away from, from them, you know, because, you know, they might need me. You know what, they didn't need me as much as I thought they needed me. I needed them to need me more than I, than they needed me, I think. So, I heard you guys talking about, you were buying food in, like, what was it, like, what was it that you were buying? You know, and 
and that was something that that you mentioned that you guys open the refrigerator in the morning of what do you want for dinner i am absolutely so bored with food mm -hmm. it's like yeah yeah it's yeah. the same thing same Thing. And it's because the it's question sweet. is, what do you want for dinner? And my husband goes, I don't know. I'll tell my husband, he'll sell it to me. And then I'll say, well, what do you want for dinner? He goes, food. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of food? And so then he starts becoming kind of smart alecky. Cooked. <laughs> well, I can make a salad. No, I don't feel like a salad. Well, then what do you want? I don't know. It's so hard. You know, I think you can have so much chicken, you know, so much fish, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, and, and you're pretty much just cooking for one, right, right, right now? Yep. Now that'll be interesting when you, you guys have to cook for two. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like tonight, you know, I, when I shop, and, and you guys have heard me talk about this, I shop the grocery store ads. You know, I shop the ads, and yeah. I mean, I can make a package of chicken for two of us, you know, last, you know, a whole week, you know? You get the one half, I get the other, or you know, it's in, in thirds or quarters, depending on how big the chicken breast is, or something like that. And that's like, you know, two dinners and two lunches, you know. So, what else is going on? And my my forever shrinking friend back there, I saw your picture on Facebook. That's amazing, mm -hmm. that's absolutely great. amazing. Had any has anyone did anyone see that her picture? Oh, yeah. Amazing. That's you. <laughs> That's her. Yeah, I mean, and I, like I was saying, his face today to me looks so different than it just even did last month. And you're how far out? You're almost two years, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're still having all those changes going on, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very noticeable. And like, like you, it, right in here with you, I mean, it's, you're very, very noticeable. You know, I mean, every time I see you guys walk in, like, you look different. But, I mean, you, it's just amazing just to see, you know, how everybody really, every month, you know, because we don't see you guys, I don't see you guys every day, and I can see how you guys have morphed, you know, into something, <laughs> into something less. I know. You know what? We have some clothes tonight, too. Some, some, some of our girls brought clothes. So there will be clothes for you to try. And what else is going on? Y'all have to make, y'all have to tell me what's going on with you. Any problems, problems, anything? And that's the thing you have to remember is that you have to control your behavior. At the end of the day, no matter what procedure you have, compliance, 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 portion control, portion control, portion control. At the end of the day, surgery is 33%, 67% is the patient. Um, for me, when I had my surgery, all that they offered was the sleeve, band, and then they had the duodenal switch, which that wasn't going to happen. Um, that's a super, um, it's a really super malabsorptive surgery, and they had the bypass. So I had the bypass. Would I, me knowing me, do a bypass versus a sleeve? I would stay with a bypass because I know my demons. Yeah. and. I dump like a champ. You get sweaty, yeah, that's dumping. Dumping, right? Well, there's all different kinds. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you. There's all different kinds. Like, I drank a banana premier protein drink last week. Yeah. Wish I could die. Really? Yes. And I, all of a sudden, 12 years, I've drank pre-made protein drinks before. They right. never bothered me. And now, mm -mm, not my friend. And I think it's because a lot, uh, most of your pre-made protein drinks are milk-based. Yeah. I must have developed some kind of lactose intolerance or, 
oh, something because wow. it's just miserable. It was like my husband wasn't home. And I was like, oh my god, my stomach. I, I mean, it was it was nasty. It went on for about forty five minutes to an hour. So there you go. Or it may be, or at, at the end of the day, it may be, what the heck was it that got me? Yeah. What the heck got me? Because there's some stuff that you've eaten all along, and all of a sudden, it doesn't like you anymore. Let me ask you a question. How many people had diabetes here and had sleeves? So I see a lot of people who have sleeves that do very well. If you've got reflux, that might, reflux could be problematic for some people. And she's had a baby since she had her bypass done. And the, the, the big issue that you have to watch with the, um, with a bypass in um, having a baby is you have to make sure that you're getting your vitamins in, that you get some extra folic acid in, and that kind of stuff, because you don't want to become deficient in that because the baby takes enough out of you um, in, in terms of, of that. But she had a healthy baby, she had a healthy pregnancy. So, I mean, she, and she actually, you know what, she told me about this pregnancy versus the pregnancy where she had a 10 and a half pound baby. Um, could be because she gained so much weight, um, was so much easier just having a nine pound baby versus having a 10 and a half pound baby. And just the pregnancy itself, it just, she felt physically better being pregnant, you know, um, because you do become more fertile after bariatric surgery. tell you that's why you know in your class when we talked about surgery and we talked about birth control you know you can't do hormone replacement for six weeks before and six weeks after and you know that it's kind of recommended you have an IUD put in or you practice abstinence because the problem being is that a lot of your estrogen is stored in your fat cells and as you start to lose weight all of that fun stuff comes out of your cells and it's now in your body. And now you become fertile myrtle. You know, there's a lot of young women who have bariatric surgery because, you know, a lot of them have polycystic ovaries and they can't get pregnant. But once they start losing weight, bam, bam. bam. So there you go. And so, you know, you, you, you'll hear talk of a lot of these young women, they haven't had a menstrual cycle in, what, months, months, and months. All of a sudden they have surgery and it's something they haven't seen in like six, six months maybe. And then it's like something they've never had before. So there's, there's a, we see a lot of resolution of a lot of comorbidities with the sleeve and the bypass. We've seen resolution of diabetes with the bypass, we've seen resolution of diabetes with the sleep. So how many people's heads are different than their stomachs? Yeah. It's, a, it's a process and you know what? It is. I mean, I know when I'll I'll order something if we go out and I order something to eat and it's too much and I'll go and I actually look at it. And it's a phrase my mother used to use all the time, um, but literally I think it's true now. I'll look at it and go, "Gosh, maybe I shouldn't have ordered that. My eyes are bigger than my stomach." Mm -hmm. You know, and it's you you have to really work at giving yourself that portion mm -hmm. and not doing not going beyond where you should go. And like when we spoke yesterday, you know, I mean, you're afraid. And you, you can't be afraid of food because guess what? And you know, people are afraid of food because that's what got them in trouble in the first place or got them to where they were, or all of us to where we were in the first place. But the bottom line is, is you've got the tool now and you have to use that tool
to make it work and make the right choices. And that's big, is learning to make the right choices. And a lot of times I will tell people it's about quality over quantity, you know. And I mean, you know, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. We all, we all hit bumps in the road. Your stomach, it's not going to grow like this. No. Um, what could happen with a bypass is, so here's your, esoph here's your mouth, here's your esophagus, and here's your pouch, okay? At the end of that pouch is a little tiny opening that your food goes through. If you overstuff or if you drink on top of it, you can eventually stretch out the opening coming out of your pouch. Okay, so that's why you have to practice portion control. That's why you're one of the reasons you're not going to eat and drink at the same time because you're going to practice, you, you need to practice portions. You don't want to stretch out the, the stoma coming outside. Well, you, you know, you always hear people say, well, the reason she gained weight or the reason he gained weight is he stretched out his stomach. The reason they gained weight was because they were eating and doing things they shouldn't be doing, you know. And, you know, it's grazing. It's, it's grazing, and it's easy, it's very easy to graze. It's very easy, believe it or not, people don't think so, especially people who are new. It's, it's very easy to out-eat your sleeve or your, your pouch. How many people have done that? You know, not consistently, but, you know, you've, you're eating, and then, you know, like maybe you're one week, two weeks, you're just totally out of control, and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've been on a feeding frenzy, you know, and you're just eating everything in sight. It's really important that you practice that mindful eating, that you, you, you know, you, you plan your meals, like the, um, the, the meals that they've been getting, the three meals that they've been getting a week. I mean, that's perfect, it's portioned out, it's working perfectly. I'm just wondering if it was just too much fat for you. Yeah, it yeah. sounded like it was. It sounds like it was extremely fatty. And 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 you're you're fairly new, so those are things that you sadly have to learn the hard way. You know, um, there's and sometimes it's just experimenting with how you're cooking and stuff. You know. Um, you know, you can rub a little olive oil on, like the salmon, and just, you can put it on the grill, like, not even five minutes, boom, boom, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Let me get my straw out. Yeah, I'll do that. Straws. Straws. Yeah. You can eventually do straws. You can eventually do straws. It's just in the beginning, especially with your burping issue, you're swallowing too much air. And it smells disgusting when you go past the fast food place. Yes. Have you guys yeah. seen, does, that, does anybody have Netflix? Do you guys have Netflix at all? Yes. Yeah. Have you guys seen that documentary called um, Fed Up? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Oh, you guys have to watch it. It's called Fed Up, F-E-D-U-P. And it's about, take a look at it before we, we, we meet next time. It's basically really about childhood obesity. Oh. No, 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 not, uh. this is called Fed Up. And okay. they actually follow a couple, they follow a couple kids. Oh, okay. And they're, you know, they're like preteen, teenagers kind of thing. And they're, they're talking to this one family. And it's a Hispanic family. And this, this child, who's probably maybe 13, 14 years old, he weighs close to 400 pounds. Wow. Yeah, he's a big kid, big, big kid. And his mom says in there, well, in our culture, Big means healthy and you know and so it, it follows him and he ended up having bariatric surgery I don't know if he had sleeve or bypass but I mean it, it kind of follows him a little bit and talks about it and how the father's absolutely scared that this this kid is doing this but he was a big boy but some of the other stuff that goes in there they talk about sugar and they actually show on the screen um, sugar 
and all these derivatives of sugar, which every single one of us partakes in, I'm pretty sure. And it, they, it also talks about um, like the sugar in, in your different drinks and stuff, and in your soft drinks and your juices and everything. It was very, it was like a, almost like a two hour documentary. Um, I was looking to see if I could have gotten it here and played it here, but I wasn't able to because I would like, I would, you know, otherwise I would like to have watched it collectively as a group to kind of, you know, bring some discussion as to see what you guys thought about it. But it's actually really, it's very eye-opening, not just because we're looking at children, because if you drive past any school, you look at some of these, these kids and they're much bigger 10-year-olds than probably a lot of us were as 10-year-olds. Mm -hmm. You know, the, um, the rise of obesity in schools is just massive. When I had my surgery, I would watch the, the Food Network. I know. And my husband said to me, he goes, Why, why Tasty. are you watching that? And he changed the channel and he left. Okay, he left. So I changed the channel back. So where I was sitting, I could see my husband when he came home. And I went, Okay, and I changed the channel once, changed the channel twice, so he couldn't trace what I'm doing. I felt like I was watching porn or something, you know? I had to change the channel twice so I wouldn't get caught. Yeah. And you know what? And I didn't want to eat it. Yeah. I just enjoyed looking at it.